Hi there and welcome back to the shop. It's about 10 degrees out, so we're gonna make the best of this, but I have my new place, all my tools hanging up and everything, and an actual place to work, so now we can tear into this engine. For anyone that's just joining us, this is a 1957 Harley G model Chevy car engine. It's a flathead Harley Davidson engine. They made all the way from 1936, I think, till 1973. These things, last quite a while. They're very heavy. They don't really make that much power compared to modern ones, but man, they're cool. Did I mention they're heavy? Fuck. Anyway, so we're going to be starting to tear into this thing right here, and I'm going to show you the process as we do it. So the first things I'm going to tackle today are going to be pulling off cylinder heads, pulling cylinder head bolts, and starting to work our way down. I plan to probably, we'll see how it goes, but completely disassemble this engine so we can get cleaned. As far as I know, this engine hasn't been open for, well, since it was put together in 1957. I don't really have much information. I got this out of a guy who got out of a barn in Mississippi, rural, rural Mississippi, and all the information was scarce from that. So it's best to just play it safe, tear it down all the way, and just clean as much as we can. So, without further ado, we're going to get started with this. So, cylinder head bolts come off first. I've moved you around so you can get a better view. So here's the cylinder head and the cylinder head bolts. So we'll take these off. Also take off the spark plug. Now that none of these are tight, I did take these off when I bought the motorcycle to check to see what it was like inside. Put that away. So I know at least they're pretty decent. Uh, the cylinders are pretty decent looking inside. So we'll remove these. We don't have to worry about untorquing them in a specific order. So they fine. All right, I have all the head bolts off. It's amazing how not terrible these look. I mean, I mean, right under where it was still within the head. I mean, what was exposed to the air is pretty rusted, but not even that terribly. And all this looks well, pretty damn good. So it does look like someone crushed the absolute snot out of it. It's dished out. I'm probably gonna have to get it on the washers, but those look pretty good. Alright, now you're going to see what they look like inside. Ooh, that's crusty. Okay, OEM casket. That's cool. Let me pry that off properly, actually. That's pretty neat. You can see how much carbon buildup there was and sticking to the edge of that gasket. Nasty. Very cool. Slide these out. Not terribly pitted or corroded. I mean, there's rust on everything, but you know, it's just surface. And more importantly, I'll put this over here. The inside of the cylinder doesn't look terrible. A little rusting on the top, but just a little bit. I mean, this is what I saw when I originally went to go buy the bike, but you know, it looks even better now than I had seen it originally. Valve train seems to work. Looks like the valves aren't stuck, which was good. Well, it's one of the reasons I bought it. The engine wasn't even seized. I had to check the valve guides. That's one thing. 
This one seems okay, but this one seems a little wobbly. Looks good. And the side. Eh, about the same, and this is more of the same. Corrosion, carbon buildup, gasket's still there though. Really interesting. But they're still there after so long. And this one's more of the same. You got more corrosion. But a lot more corrosion I've built up on the piston too. But cylinder wall, wall isn't terribly scored, which makes me think there isn't a broken ring or anything in either of these. The valves on this side also run. Oh, they're not seized. And these ones seem okay. Both intake ones seem a little loose in the uh, valve guides, but We'll measure those eventually. All right, well, we have them off. So next is to get these, we're gonna pull the uh, intake manifold off, this little Y piece here. And the carburetor would sit right here. Actually, I have it, hold on a second. Oh, I can't read it, but it's the M18. I don't think it's a linker. I think it's one of the other ones. I'm probably wrong. I'll see more into it when I, rebuild this, which will be in a future video eventually. We'll get there. But this would sit right here, my side bolt. And so that's the intake manifold. So it's just one carburetor for both cylinders. All right, but we're gonna take it off. So how to take this off is these uh, giant uh, plumbing nuts you gotta unscrew those. And you'll be able to take this off. So let's see if my crescent will open up enough. If not, I'll get my pipe wrench. Oh. Nope. Well, hold on a second. I got a pipe wrench. These are flat or a smooth uh, jawed pipe wrench. So I won't mar it. Hopefully, if I'm delicate enough. Be careful with this. Okay. Don't want to break a fin or anything. Oh, God, these are tight. Try the other one. Huh. Oh, God, that's tighter. Give him a little jolt. A little tippy tap. I feel him coming. Okay, now here's the thing. I don't know if you can see it, but here's what I'm bringing you in for it. Let me bring you in so you can see this. Okay, so there's a close-up of the nuts on the intake manifold. So if you look at it, this hex shape's actually gonna interfere with each other when you go to pull them off. These, uh, the points will actually collide with each other, it looks like. So what I'm going to do is leave this flat here, straight up, so then this has more clearance as it comes out, and then I'll come at this one next. All right, I have one nut backed off now. Now this is captive, but it's free floating, so I can just put in an orientation. So I'm going to put it in this orientation with the flat parallel to the next nut surface so that I can rotate that one freely around and get that off. All right, it's loose enough. It's going to come off. You can see what I meant by that. See if this was all the way corner to corner, it would interfere. This is touching up against that surface. I wouldn't be able to back this one all the way off if this was the point 
pointing all the way outward, so it needs to have a flat pointing that way. So now I can back the rest of this one off. Up, oh, come on. It's coming. Here we go. And there we go. Wow. You can really see the carbon build up inside the intake. Crazy. All right, I have you phasing into the engine because now our focus is going to be pulling the rest of the cylinders and valve train off. So what we need to do to do that is that these valves go all the way through and actually come into these little cylindrical housings. This is where the spring and the keepers are, and this is what rides on the camshaft followers, and the camshafts are in this. This is the cam chest. So to get the cylinder off, we need to unscrew this from here, because it's screwed on in this area right here. This is the tappet block it screws into. Lift those two off, then adjust the lash and the valves, just back them all the way off so the valves aren't touching at all, so there's no spring pressure or pressure from the camshaft on the head. And then we can go to the bolts at the base here. Here, there's four. Here, on the other side, and then on the reverse as well. So there's one in each corner. So that's what we got it. So, I should get a smaller wrench in there if I can. I'm afraid I might not be able to. Nope. Looks like this is gonna be a pipe wrench project for sure. I'm gonna take the points cap off. There you have a points and a condenser in there. Rusted on the outside, still good on the inside. Surprisingly. For its age. So now I have more clearance for this. So I'm gonna to try to come in here with my wrench. Alright, I got you at the side view looking in. Well, diagonally. So we need to get the wrench on these hex flats here. Easier said than done. There's not a lot of room for these. There we go. Now these lift up and out of the way. Now you can see the tappets. Sorry, I keep calling them tappets. They're not. You can see the valve flash adjustment screw. So a screw and nut combo here. So now back those off and then this valve will be entirely free of the spring pressure. Well, it'll be entirely free of the uh, cam lobe that's inside here and there'll be no pressure, so then we can pull these off. What happens is that if these are pushing up on this, when you're gonna take these nuts off the base, you could be pushing this way as you're taking these off, and you might actually break one of the little mounting sections where this goes on, because the pressure will be pulling against it. We don't want that to happen. All right, so I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna do the other one, and then we'll take this thing off.
All right, I got the last one, or uh, the second one out. But we have access to these uh, screws now, so we can back them all off. Make sure it's on compression stroke. There we go. So they're not touching them at all, mostly. Now we can come in, back these. That's off. So this nut jams it against the base. So this nut jams it against the base, and then this one is how you take up slack. So we're gonna back those all the way in, as much as we can. There you go. Oops. But you can see now. Just play up and down. So we know that we're contacting it. This is good. This is exactly what we want. So now we know these two are contacting or pushing up on these valves. So now we can go ahead and take these four valve nuts off. Or these four uh, cylinder nuts that hold the cylinder to the bottom end off the valve, these ones right here. But before I do that, I'm gonna actually go work on the other two. So I don't have the piston and rod free floating over here before I get this off. So let me do that and then we'll come back and take the cylinder out. There you go. All right, now I got all uh, four of these type of block screws for the valve lash backed all the way off. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this one off first. This is the front cylinder because the generator is out here. So I'm going to put it so the it is on top dead center of combustion stroke. It means none of those valves are going to be interacting. Lift them up to confirm. Yep, nothing happening there. So I'm going to go in with a, should be a 916 wrench. Indeed it is. Gonna go in. In fact, I'm gonna put the cap back on this. Just for, you know, nicety. Protect it. I'm gonna go in. Oops, wrong way, I'm dumb. There we go. And I'm going to start unscrewing these. I scratched that. So what I actually gotta do is I gotta remove the generator so I can get at this nut back here for the cylinder. Uh, it's in the way and getting it, removing it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to do that. So there's a T-bolt down here and that holds this strap down into it. So I'm gonna go underneath and get that. Generator. Now the generator is covered with four holes on the front. So you gotta remove those. Let me spin it around for you so you can see. Uh, Hold on a second. There we go. Keep this safe. Go. Oh. Alright. Generator is held on by. These four. Right here. So I'm gonna do those.
Come on up, little guy. Don't be shy. There you go. Yep, nice and loose. So we'll pull this out. Tilt up and over. There we go. Generator, driving gear, and the oil flinger. Not gonna touch it, I have really dirty hands. But basically that keeps the oil from soaking in and I believe coming into the generator area. Really neat. To put this somewhere safe. Now we have access. Sweet. All right. Ooh, a lot of dirt back here. Ooh, that doesn't look too good. I know, it's, well, no, it doesn't look too good. Ooh, it's a lot of dirt. Not surprising, though, because, I mean, this is just a nice spot for dirt to accumulate. You don't want to uh, brush too much off. All we really care about is getting at that mounting screw. However, hmm. The strap's held on by a screw as well. I'm trying to see if the screw's rusted to nothing or if you can get a screwdriver in there and actually take it off and get even more access. I think we can. Let me move this so you guys can see. All right, and here. True. Here you can see the T-nut, or a T-bolt, because I need a strap. So, we're gonna put this on that. Okay, get a wrench. Uh. Oop, something happened. Nah, didn't work. Came off. I think we can get by with that though. Oh, my gosh. Here. Okay. Just need to lift this up. Oh, lift up all the way. Yeah. Put that in there. Oops. Need about 10 more hands for this. Put that down. Cut this up all the way. Get the wrench on that. Go backwards on it. There you go. Give my hammer. Open that up a bit. And just repeat.
There you go. Haha. -ha. There we go. There's another one. And the other two are much easier to get to. A nice and the open. So I'll do those. There we go, now we have everything off. So the last thing to do would just be to pull this cylinder off. I'm not gonna do that. The reason I'm not gonna do that is I'm gonna get a brush and just brush down everything first. I just don't want crap falling into the bottom end. I'm gonna take it all apart anyway, but it'd be nice to just keep it as clean all the way through as I can. So I'm gonna brush everything off, do the other side's nuts, and then, then we can take them off. It's exciting. All right, now that we have all the cylinder nuts, the nuts that hold the cylinders down attached to the lower end, now that we have all those off, we can knock the cylinders off with the valve trains in them. So I'm gonna get a soft hammer. There's a wood face. And, well, I'm gonna get a side tap. Try to loosen. Mm -hmm. That one's not working as well. I'm gonna get a piece of wood. Huh? Basically, I'm trying to unstick the gasket that is sitting right between these two. So then these things will actually come out. Oof. Not yet. Let's get a couple more. Okay. Oh god. Things are stuck right and tight. Let's try this one. That's coming along now. You can just see it right there. You can just see right here, it's starting to unstick. Hey, look, this one looks like it's starting to do it as well. So it looks like this one's gonna come off first because it's gonna be easiest. All right, so we can rock these back. Looks like it's entirely unstuck now. I'm gonna zoom you guys out. All right. And there's the cylinder right off. Sweet. Looks a little nasty on the inside. I'll have to clean that and get a good look. Definitely nasty inside those valve covers. Those will need to get cleaned for sure. All right, that's one. See the piston? Wow, a lot of build up. A lot of side slapping looks like. The ring on the sides. Any rings broken? No. Looks like all the rings are actually still good. Whether or not I'll use them is different, but they're not broken, so that's excellent. All right, let me grab a small towel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this over here like that. Just keep things from falling in. Probably won't, but, and you know, what's the point? Because we're going to take it all off anyway, but it's nice to keep it, you know, things from falling in. All right. Well, let's keep at this one. There we go. Oh. 
Uh, rings don't want to let go. Oh God, that's gonna suck. There we go. Can I mark that? Nope, it's okay. Oof. Looks like this one had the same problem. Oh, there's definitely scoring on the ends of the piston, right on the side skirts. These rings good. These rings are all right as well. Wow. Side to side is not terrible. Not much up and down. I'll have to measure that eventually. What about this one? Let me take that over. Ooh, might have to redo the bushings. Okay, we'll see. Very interesting. Let me scoot these down all the way. Oops, come on now. There we go. You can see just how low they go when they're in the cylinders. They go all the way down. Oh, there we are. There is the second one. Right there. Very nice. Look inside. Ah. No, it's not terrible. I don't see any major gouging or anything. Yeah. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Pretty good shape. Get them wiped out eventually and we'll see even better. Oh, well, I was looking back at the footage and thinking about it. Two of these screws I took out on the generator mounting when I removed the generator. Those are not generator screws. Those were screws for the cam chest. Let's see. Oh, there goes a hundred year old part. I oh, found it. <laughs> washer. Let's see. Here they are. The ones for the generators have a Phillips head on them. And the ones for the cam chest are just a flat head. Or for a standard flat screwdriver. So I'm going to put these two back because we're not doing the cam chest yet. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, the actual next thing I need to do is remove the springs and the keepers from the cylinders. I need to make a tool to extract these tappet blocks, so I need to... I basically want this so I know what thread uh, will be right, and I can take that to a machine shop and get a little piece made up that I can let me pull those tappet blocks out with. So we're going to take these off. And the way, well... There's correct ways to do it, and then there's less so correct ways to do it. The way I know how to do it, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, is to use a socket over it. That's the right size. You basically just let the keepers, which are these little pieces in here, let me zoom you in and show you, which are these pieces here, these little half almost half moon pieces, you see on each side, they straddle the vowel stem, which has a little groove in it, and keep it in place. That's why they're called keepers. Then there's a plate here that the keepers sit against, and then there's the spring underneath that. These covers are held in place by the spring itself, actually. So once you remove all this, those come off as well. So normally you'd have a big clamp and you would clamp it from one side to the other and squeeze it and then just pull those out gently. However, which is always what people say before something goes terribly wrong, another way to do it is just to put a right sized socket on. This is actually a spark plug socket for a 5 8 uh, spark plug. And it doesn't always work, but when it does, you want to make sure the valve, you don't want to gack that up. 
put it under right. And give it a whack. There's one. You can see it here. Do it again. There we go. There we have our keepers. You don't need to hit it terribly hard, but you do need to hit it. There we have our two keepers. You can see they're kind of conical shaped. And our backing plate, which has a matching cone is shape in them. Our spring. Our cup, or covers, which actually have little band seals on them. Uh, you'll see those when I take them apart more so. And then we have our valve, which comes right out. And is, well, not, not in terrible condition. There's not much pitting on this stem. Looking at it now, the faces are definitely rusted up, so we'll see how well we can do. But the actual surface looks pretty... Oops, can I see it? There you go. The actual surface doesn't look terrible. It's definitely not pitted or anything. So we'll see if we can reuse these. Then we have our valve guide, which is this piece that's actually pressed in to the, to the cylinder. So we have to check these to make sure they haven't been worn out so that the size isn't terribly big. This one I think might be might be too much. We'll see. Basically the problem with that is if you have too much, you might get a vacuum leak into the intake cylinder, which this one would be, and that could be a problem. On the exhaust one, if it's too much, then you'll get exhaust gases coming, too much exhaust gases coming out into this one, and it'll heat this area up too much. Yeah, you don't want that either. So there we go. I'm gonna mark these, uh, bag them up, and then have those uh, stored away and then we'll do the rest of them. Oh, one thing, a uh, piece I didn't point out before, in this cover, you have the upper and lower, top and bottom, you know, whatever you want to call them. And inside of that, there is this band here, right here. I'm not going to pick at it, but it's this band. This actually is a little seal that seals against the two. And you see there's this lip here. Look at corner here. Here's a seal, and here's this little lip. So when it goes through these, there's a little lip on this one as well. So you put it through and it catches and that seal actually keeps this sealed up so things can't uh, get in there. And also what happens is these valves, valve lifters on the block, oh, excuse the neighbor pulling in, the valve lifters on the block will actually, uh, oil mist will permeate up into these areas and that helps keep the oil in and not start oozing out as well. So another piece for you guys to know about. Oh, and uh, there was a seal, a little flat seal, it looked like a little washer. That sat on this area up here, which was up against the valve, well, the cylinder, and the spring was holding it against it. That's just another seal uh, that sits. So there you go.